Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 806. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 806 to 811, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to build a schedule. So this is like for a syllabus, but it could be any kind of schedule. We need to put dates here, and we want formulas so that we can put any starting date here, and it'll fill out the schedule. And we want to not show an actual date, but show the word holiday depending on what we put here. So the end result would look like this, right? I could put, um, I think this, whatever Monday I want here. No, um, so that would be the 19th. But any Monday goes here, and the actual days will change. But we also want to, and I'll control Z, Z, we want to be able to put any date here and have the word holiday show up. For example, I'm going to put, um, 927 here. So and then over here, the word holiday will show up. Now we're going to do this with conditional formatting and the number tab. So you need Excel 2007 or 10 to do this. All right, let's go back over here. This part of it, building the schedule that's linked to a start date, is can, can be done in any version. I'm going to say equals this, and then enter, and then equals the one above. So relative cell reference plus one, right? And then I'm going to copy this down. Now, right here, I need it to jump not one. So here, you can see it's looking at the date above and adding one day, right? But here, we need to add three. So I'm going to say equals this plus three, all right? And that'll give me Monday. And then copy this down. Oops, sorry, no, no, no. And then I build this one here equals the one above plus one. Right, so in essence, the top of the schedule, there's this formula, and all of these are 1. But this is a whole different set of formulas, right? It's add 3, and then all of these are add 1. Well, we can actually copy this down through the rest of the schedule, right? So I'm going to grab this, and it will know to always, for this, five, this range of five cells, this will be plus 3, and these will be plus 4. So I'm going to drag this down. Now, it's going to mess up the formatting, but luckily, since 2002, we have these, this great fill option. It says fill without formatting, so it'll fill the formula only. All right, now, so that's the dates. Now we can put any Monday here, so the 19th or whatever it may be, and this will all update. Control Z. All right, now we need to build a formula that uses the word, uh, puts the word holiday there. Now I'm going to use conditional formatting, and conditional formatting, that means if it sees the 14th, Conditional formatting will see a true, and it will apply a different formatting anytime the cell contains a particular date that matches over here. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to do something quite tricky. We're going to use the net work days. Now, what does net work days? Now, international is awesome, and I have some videos on that. That's if your holidays um, or your weekends are not on Saturday and Sunday. So, actually, this one's great. Um, this Dun, dun, this argument right here, this weekend weekend argument over here is great because you could put any kind of weekend. And if you search for Workdays International, I have a bunch of cool videos. But I'm just going to use the, uh, the standard one because Saturday and Sunday, uh, that's the default on this one. All right, so the start date. Now, this is weird. We're going to click a relative cell runs because we want to copy this down. In essence, we're building a true false formula in the cells over here. And then we just want to see how it works. And then we're going to put it into the conditional formatting dialog box. But notice the start date, comma, and the end date. Now, what would, if we're asking what the net work days are, if it's looking at uh, always one day and one day, it's either going to give us a total of one or a total of zero. Now, for all of these, these are all Monday through Friday. So if we copy this down, it would give us one all the way down. But no way. It's the holidays part of this that's so helpful. Now, I'm going to highlight a bunch of empty cells, too, because any given quarter with the syllabus, I don't know what the holiday, how many there are going to be. And I'm going to lock this. Now, what this will do is when it sees that one of these days, like the 14th down here, is a holiday, it will show zero network, uh, network days. Copy this down. I'm going to double click and send this down. Again, we're just looking at how this is working, right? And then we'll use this uh, formula up in the dialog box. Now, there's a zero, but that's really the actual, we want this to say 
true over here, because this is a holiday, because our goal is to put the word holiday and paint the cell red. So I'm going to come up here. Since 1 is true and 0 is false, I really want the reverse here. So I'm going to come up here, and there's a function that does just that. It takes a true and turns it to false, and a false and turns it to true. Now remember, 1 and 0 are 0 is an, uh, 1 is true, 0 is false, so this will work just fine. It, in essence, it's converting it. All right, so we have a bunch of falses, and there it is. There's our logical true-false formula that we can use in the conditional formatting dialog box. So we see it there and there, right? So those are the holidays. Now, when you build your conditional formatting true-false formulas in a column, we need to highlight this whole column and, and then invoke the dialog box. So the active cell is going to be right there. So you actually have to copy this formula out, the very top one, copy. I put it into edit mode and copy, escape. Now I'm going to click here and control shift down arrow. I'm highlighting the entire column. The active cell is there. It's exactly parallel to where we copied our formula. So I go up to Home, Style, no, I don't even know where it is. Oh, there it is, Conditional Formatting. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Alt-O-D. So Alt-O-D. So if you were doing up here, you'd say a new rule. And then there it is. I'm going to click right here. I clicked Alt-O-D, and then uh, New Rule Formula. I click here, and now I Control-V. Now I can format. Now. This is all pretty cool. Um, you used to be able to use um, these tabs right here in earlier versions. right? This true-false formula so far would work fine if we just wanted a color, right? So we just want it red. But here, this came in 2007, the Number tab. And check this out. I'm going to click right here. This is custom. This allows us to put our own custom number formats. Now here's the idea. This already has number format there. This number format will only be applied if there's a true, and that's when the holidays are. So uh, all we have to do is put in quotes holiday. Holiday. If we were to use this number format on a cell, that means any number that was in the cell would just show the word holiday. That's kind of a cool little trick alone. But this will get only get applied if there's a true, that which means it's a holiday. So now I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, now that will work. Now we have built a schedule, right, that we can come and put any start date or change any uh, holiday here. Let's say the 28th. And uh, there we go. Now, one last thing, and I should have showed you this up front. I have some custom number formatting here. I'm going to control, and this number formatting has nothing to do with the conditional formatting. That red and holiday is only coming because we used conditional formatting and had that true false format. But I want to look at the uh, formatting for this whole column. Because a lot of times in schedules, you know, you enter the dates and it just shows the date. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control 1 that opens the format cells dialog box and then on number I'm going to delete all this now by default we know that dates are serial numbers right so that's the number of days since December 31st 1899 where January 1st 1900 is 1 January 2nd is 2 uh, this date right here September 22nd 2011 is 40,812 days since December 31st, 1899. But here, I want to build a custom number formatting. If you've never done custom number formatting before, date formatting is the easiest, because we have for dates month, day, year. So if you want to show the word for the actual name of the day, you put a D. Now watch this, and this is what's so cool. D is for day, M is for month, Y is for year. As soon as I put a D, it gives you a preview. So one D will, just, D will show me just the number. 2Ds, but look at 3Ds. It'll show you MO, and if you put 4, it gives you the whole actual name of the day. So I'm going to put DDD, and then comma, space, and then M. Let's watch this. So 1M gives me that. M, 2Ms give me a 0, 9. 3Ms give me the abbreviation, and 4 will give me the whole word. So I'm going to keep MM, space, D. You can see the preview up here comma, and then y, y, y. 
Now, w only three Ys for four uh, digits in the year. Now I can see I left a space out here. All right, so that's actually uh, the actual cell number formatting is that custom number format, which is nice for a schedule like this. All right, click OK. All right, uh, so there's a little bit about incrementing uh, some formulas for a schedule, custom number format for the actual dates, and then our conditional formatting for holidays. See you next trick.